BYU's comeback attempt falling short 75-68 against a top five team. Number four to be exact, losing by seven to Houston. And now the Cougars, as you mentioned, Dave, a moment ago, two and four in Big 12 play, but have been in every game. Maybe it feels like with the law of averages, BYU should be three and three. So maybe a game behind schedule, but the point remains right there in every single contest. Let's focus on Houston specifically. That's top of mind. How would you sum up how you're feeling about this BYU basketball team after last night's shortcoming against Houston? Houston's one of the best teams in the league, uh, number four in the country. They're final four good, Dave. Yeah, so they're, they're a measuring stick for BYU. Uh, a couple of minutes at the end of the first half, BYU couldn't score, Houston did. A couple of minutes at the end of the game, BYU couldn't score, and Houston did. So that's the difference. It's 68 all. And then Houston finishes on a 7-0 run. They build a seven-point halftime lead going on a mini run. So BYU right there toe-to-toe -to -toe throughout except for the closing moments. Uh, young teams, this isn't a young team per se, but young teams learn how to close. And I would also say teams in a new conference, although Houston's in a new conference, but they've been elite for some time. But teams in a new conference got to learn how to close. And when BYU does... Then, you know, that's the difference between being four and two and two and four, uh, holding it together at Baylor, uh, holding a big lead at Texas Tech. Sure. Or, you know, 68 68, and you got the ball. The one at Texas Tech stings the most because, again, I, I kind of feel like BYU's good enough to be three and three in league right now yeah. in, instead of two and four. And that wouldn't be a crazy notion. No. And having, again, lost back-to-back -back games in Big 12 play, and now some pressure really mounts as BYU has to turn the page to Saturday against Texas. We'll get there eventually and turn the page to the Longhorns who beat up on Oklahoma last night. But I said to Mark Pulp after my interview with him last night, and I don't know how much he cared to hear what I thought <laughs> after that I'm game sure last night, after that hear. interview, but he, he was kind and, and we talked about it. But I was encouraged by a lot of things, Dave. First and foremost, the fact that BYU got down by 13 points in the second half and managed to erase that deficit yep. against that caliber of team in Houston. We were all questioning BYU's ability to turn it on in the second half. They did. They got it to 68, and then BYU had multiple opportunities to deliver that climb-the-mountain blow, right, where you come all the way back. There's just something mentally to taking a lead after you've been down by that many points. No matter how wide open exactly. you are. Exactly. It just, it just didn't go. And I know Trevin Nell is just killing himself yeah. right now. And I feel bad for him because he's an elite shooter and he's been so good. And he hit some big shots to even put BYU in position to be in that game. But, man, they needed that three to go down. If BYU takes a 71-69 lead in that moment... I think we're having an entirely different conversation here. And we're talking about, oh, my gosh, BYU just beat number four at Houston. They are three and three and feeling good with Texas coming to town. It's, it's that fickle. It's that close. And they know? were that close with guys who didn't play very well. Dallin Hall didn't shoot very well. Jackson Robinson didn't shoot very well. Shot a lot. They shot a lot of threes. Didn't hit very many under 30% in their building. That's not typically yeah. them. BYU didn't need to be perfect to beat no. Houston. Clearly. So with all the imperfections, including uh, Fusini Traore coming into the game way too late. Even Mark Pope acknowledged that it took him a while to get to Fus. Fus was kind of a game changer down the stretch in the last seven minutes because all of a sudden BYU had an inside presence and it was almost like Houston was like, uh, yeah, we weren't planning on the inside presence. Sure. And then all of a sudden an inside out game came and Foose delivered some big baskets down the stretch. I would love to see him a little earlier, but on those big nights, uh, Spencer Johnson had four points. Uh, again, Nell was quiet. Hall was quiet. Foul trouble. Dog Nell and Hall. And, and despite all that, they have an open shot to take the lead with two. 46 seconds. Two, two open shots. Two, yeah. Foose misses that little floater. At, when it's tied, Houston makes a free throw, and then Trevin Nell has the open three yeah. down the barrel, which he makes eight out of ten times. Right, right. It, and so all of that considered, and, the, and, the, and, and you had a chance to beat Houston yeah. here, you're not that far off. You're not that far off from contending in this sure, league. Sure, sure. And that's what I think fans took optimistic you know, optimistically home last night after the game or watching it. It's like, hey, we're, we're not getting mopped up in this league. Yeah. You know, Iowa State didn't come in here and do to BYU what their football team did to BYU. Uh, BYU pounded them. I mean, there's chances when they, when they play two halves and finish games, they can take the number two defensive Certainly. team in the country and put 87 points on them. I know a lot of fans are frustrated about some calls that didn't 
necessarily go BYU's way late in the game, but I'm not ready to put this game and the result of this game on a couple of controversial or questionable calls late. Uh, typically, to beat a team that is as good as Houston, you need one or two of those to go your way. But regardless to the, the conversation we're having right now, BYU still had multiple opportunities to climb that mountain, to take the lead, and really put the pressure on Houston. And they did so not shooting the three ball necessarily great. It was hovering right around 30%. Yeah. They made 11. I said yesterday it's the rule of 12s for this BYU team when you, when you take on a team like Houston. Make 12 or more threes, have 12 or fewer turnovers. BYU had 13 turnovers. They made 11 threes. They, they had two shots at that 12. They needed it just, to get to it 12. It just didn't go. <laughs> but they also, when Dallin Hall specifically was off the floor, really started to look pressed in hunting just any deep three. Like, BYU took some bad shots. Yeah, Jackson Robinson sure. went back-to-back -back on on long range shots that weren't close, that were, you know, Robinson's got the green light. We've seen him put on a show. Uh, that was a tough time yeah. to take those two shots. And, and Mark Pope talked about it uh, in your interview after the game. And, and that, that they can work out. But, but they were early in the shot clock and they were way out there. And you could tell the fans were, that's when I, you could feel some frustration sure. of, guys, we want to shoot the three. We get that. That's who we be. That's who be. Good threes. There are there are there are good threes and there are better threes. Got to shoot for the better threes, but at least take a good three. Yeah, avoid avoid the rushed deep three shot. And, and Mark Pope addressed that specifically, as you mentioned. In fact, let's hear from Coach Pope during my post game interview. I, I like the number. Um, we have some. You know, we're pushing the envelope so hard that we have some that uh, even I shake my head sometimes. Um, and that's a very nuanced conversation with a team that's trying to be really aggressive. Um, and so that's a place where we could probably, um, you know, we probably have seven or eight possessions out there where we can, we can save it and, 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 and maybe um, stress the defense a little bit more. Um, but sometimes when you have that conversation in too much detail, especially with a bunch of kids that are trying so hard to do what we ask, sometimes you swing too far the other way, and we're definitely not willing to do that. So those will be nuanced conversations that we have as we go through the season. He mentioned seven or eight specific possessions where you could move it some more. You could make the defense work a little harder and try and get a better three-point shot. And these are all lessons to be learned by this BYU team. Coach Pope has talked about for the last year and a half, man, it has been just a really, at times, frustrating learning experience and, and growth and, and those, those hard growing pains are certainly there. BYU is still doing that now that they are in the Big 12 Conference. It hurts, it's, it stinks, you know? It's great when they go in. They're good enough to be three and three in this league. They're, they've been in every game and through six. But two and, so two and four certainly feels frustrating. Yeah. But I'm encouraged. We're talking about feelings. I'm encouraged that BYU has looked like they are ready to compete and play basketball at a high level each and every night. It's about finding enough and the ability to close and, and put together as close to a complete game as they can. Some do a, pretty much a complete game against Iowa State. Right. Some figure out a way to close on the road against UCF, which is turning into a better and better win. There's more out there, Dave. So I'm, I'm, I'm still feeling encouraged. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's good shooters, and those shooters have to make those shots. If you're going to live by the three, the way to stay alive is you're hitting those shots, and you got to hit more than you're hitting. 100%. Our question of the day, how would you sum up your feelings? Tell us how you really feel about BYU's loss to number four Houston last night, 75-68. Eric Wood on Facebook answers, BYU was competitive and have been every game. They just need to learn to close games, not four shots in crunch time and cut back on the costly turnovers. The turnover mark was pretty close to where it needed to be. 13, yeah. and Mark Pope said it in the postgame interview as well. He's fine with 13. Frankly, 13 against Houston is a good number. It's, again, like finding the correct open shot. BYU can move the ball super well. They can find them, but when you're down, you just naturally you're just like, you want to get that deficit down immediately. Just grab a couple more rebounds. Sure. Just, especially sure. on the defensive side, where Houston was able to cash in on second chance points at critical moments, especially down the stretch. David J. Crowley on Facebook played a solid second half, which is a vast improvement. Certainly. But need to start closing some of these conference matchups with wins. Need actual victories, not moral ones. 
If we can compete for 39 minutes, we should be able to compete for 40. Well said. Yes. That's true. Aside from the desperation three that Dallin Hall takes super late in the game, man, the three looks that BYU got when it was a single possession game, the Foose floater, the wide open Trevin Nell three, and another pretty good look in the corner for three from Richie Saunders. Those are good looks. Those were not four shots. When they're zipping the ball around, somebody ends up open. Got to make a clutch shot. Like, they had good looks. They just didn't drop last night. It's a crazy game. It really <laughs> is. It's so, the margin of error is so thin. Hashtag BYUSN on X, Facebook, and Instagram to join that conversation.